Mineral Resources Minister Mozabenze Zwane has met with management at Tao Lekwa Gold Mine near Orkney in the northwest. This is after an underground collapse claimed the lives of four mine workers on Saturday. The collapse occurred after an earth tremor hit the area. Emergency teams have since recovered the bodies. The National Union of Mine Workers is reportedly furious about the incident. Tao Lekwa allegedly ignored instructions from rock engineers who inspected the mine a few days before the incident. Meanwhile, Northwest Premier Supra Mahu Mapelo has uh, sent condolences to families of the deceased. We have met with the families earlier today and we're giving our commitment that we will be represented in all these funerals because we want our workers to be buried with dignity. Not only that, we'll also follow up in terms of the policy that has been presented to us, in terms of looking after the deceased family moving forward. Having lost four lives at a go will never please us. We're still very firm in terms of ensuring that every worker goes to work in the morning and come back and see their families. We have already talked with our team to investigate this matter further, and we are happy that uh, the management works together with us so that uh, we take this matter forward and close it. As government, we came here to say to the mine, to the employees, to the families, and to the National Department of Mineral Resources that uh, we will support them and work with everybody to make sure that the affected families are able to overcome this period of sadness. It is our hope that uh, the owners of the mine will learn lessons from this occurrence and will do everything possible to improve the technology that can help us to proactively deal in future with incidents of this nature. The Department of Mineral Resources is striving to correct ill practices in South Africa's mining industry. The department kicked off a two-day dialogue in Limpopo yesterday as part of efforts to foster better collaboration and empower communities. Our reporter Kani Mapanga has the details. And uh, Kenny Mapanga, in fact, joins us live. Very good morning to you, Kenny. Take us through uh, what took place in the first day as it was uh, the first day of the two-day dialogue there in Limpopo. Good morning to you, Lauren, and the viewers at home. Coming to you live from Atong, uh, Sefateng, uh, the mining community that has been affected by illegal practices in the mining industry in Limpopo. So yesterday was day one of uh, the Deputy Minister Godfrey Oliphant's two sessions with uh, two stakeholders, which were the chief and uh, the um, ex-miners, so the legal miners that were working in some of the legal mines that were here. So the main session that started was with the one with the chiefs, and we've seen in our previous special reports that the chiefs uh, play quite a, a vital role uh, in between the mining communities and the mining companies that come into these areas and choose to mine. And now that uh, session was private, Lauren, but it has come out that it was established that they need to work uh, towards building a better relationship between uh, the traditional leaders and mining communities. Because as, you, as you've seen in our special reports, it has been pointed out that sometimes in these communities, uh, the, the chiefs look out for their interests first um, before looking out for the community interests because they have the rights, the surface rights to the land and they can give rights to mines to come mine there. So should they get some kind of payment, then you see um, some of the practices that you see have seen in Limpopo. Now I want to point out in our special report, we went to the village of Khamoroka, which is not too far from Burgersfort, where the main issue was the issue between a lack of communication between the mining community and the chief. Now there were three chiefs in this village um, uh, that were operating in this village and a, a mine called the Black Home Mine 
I went into that area and uh, it's, uh, it's quite rich in chrome and it's a, it's a mine that was quite successful. But now the issue of trying to give shares back to the community uh, put this, multi, uh, this mine at a halt, sorry, because the three chiefs were fighting over shares worth millions. Now the result of that resulted in uh, the mining community losing their jobs and having to mine the main road. I remember Limpopo is quite rich in chrome and that's why we have a large number of uh, illegal miners uh, in Limpopo because you can pretty much mine chrome in your backyard. Now today, in day two of this uh, session, it seems that things are going quite well as they're hearing each case um, of each miner. In day two, we're expecting to hear from the mining companies and what they have to say um, about the, the mining industry, uh, particularly uh, looking at Burgess Fort and the surrounding areas, as well as the much anticipated conversation with the illegal miners, the Zama Zamas, who have uh, failed to obtain licenses for the Department of Mineral Resources and just taken matters into their own hands and mine chrome in their backyards. As I've told you, it's quite easy to, uh, to mine chrome here in Limpopo. Now, uh, Kenny, so far, what has the response been from the community? Uh, the community has been uh, receptive uh, to these uh, various sessions. We've seen them coming in their numbers to the community hall here in Sifatong to talk about uh, the issues with the Department of Mineral Resources. So I think there's, uh, there's an opportunity for, for some of these issues to be resolved, especially if uh, the DMR can intervene when it comes to their traditional leaders and the DMR can give them an opportunity to obtain licenses and mine for themselves as well. Kenny Mapanga, thank you so much for that update there live from Limbobo.